the new collection. Can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind it? Because we can see that there is a new aesthetics. About two years ago, I was CEO and creative and recently hired a co-CEO and it's really given me the opportunity to really focus on product a lot more. And I've always loved doing product, but it's been interesting to have really an in-depth look of the process, of, the, of everything, of how do we take the product further, which is something we've always challenged ourselves with, but now it's even more so. And I think people are buying less, so we want to have more special product, less of it, but we want to create that aspiration and we want to create that emotion behind each piece. And what about the tunics? Because that part was one of my most favorite and I had some conversations with um, other people. They all loved it. Can you tell us a little well, bit about it? I was thinking about the, the concept of who are we from the very beginning and, and the DNA of our brand. And from day one, I had a tunic and I had bought it in a Paris flea market. It was $6. It was a fantastic shape. Not a great fabric, but it was something that reminded me of something my grandmother or mother always wore and it was so effortless. It was getting out of the pool and putting it on, tying their hair back and looking so dynamic and chic. And I thought, wow, this is a great starter for the whole collection. So for fall, I really wanted to keep going from where we were with spring and thinking about the core of who we are, the DNA of who we are, but of course evolved and how do we take it further so the tunic will always be part of our collection speaking about the co-ceo and you know being both a creative person and a ceo of the company mm -hmm. how do you manage i mean we call it left side right side of your brain and i think what's interesting is you really see full picture and if something's not selling i'm not attached because at the core i'm a business person but at that said to make things sell you need to push the creativity and that's what i like is is that duality and and that concept of really pushing things, but also never too far where you alienate your customer and never too far where you're not true to who you are. So now speaking about uh, juggling motherhood and career, you're a great example and inspiration, I think, for all the women out there that are dreaming to build, you know, something in their lives and stay good mother, you know, for their kids, a mother that can be there with them, talk to them, you know, and really feel you know, different moments of their lives. And your kids are now a bit older, you know, and this age, you know, there is a saying in Russian language, small kids, small troubles. Yeah, big, big kids, kids, big ones. We have big, that saying you know. here too. And <laughs> so. it's very true. Um, it's interesting. I mean, I, I had a career um, that I loved, and then I found out I was pregnant with my third son. So I had three boys under the age of four. And I had to make a really tough decision because I was working at LVMH and I was working at Loewe and they had offered me to be president of the U.S. And I was 30 years old or 31 years old and I, I just really had to make a tough decision because I knew that if I took that job that I would not be half the mother I wanted to be. I think something all women face at one mm -hmm. point or another if they care about their careers and, and a lot of women don't and that's great too. And I just look at things a little differently so I knew that I didn't want to miss all those pivotal firsts of, of my children. So for the next three or four years, I was a stay-at-home mom, knowing that I would one day want to have a career at some point that was important to me. So it was during that time that I concepted this business. Um, that said, um, my boys all were in school when I launched it, and also I worked from home for the first two years out of my apartment. So I wanted to be able to have both and figure that out. That said, every day is a challenge, and I think you have to make priorities, you have to make timelines, you have to stick to a schedule, and your children come first. And I think that my boys now are older, as you said, and I'm sure they'd like me a little less involved, travel more, <laughs> which I'm well, a very, very hands-on mom. And I think raising three children in New York City is not easy on top yeah. of everything else. And you yeah. want to keep them grounded, you want to keep them low-key and appreciative and curious and mm -hmm. never jaded. And there's so many things that I work on with them, but then they have the outside, which they have to sort of come up with their own vision. Um, yeah. But it's hard, and I think it's, it's going to always be hard. And there are different challenges at different ages. But maybe that situation then kind of grounded you and actually made you concentrate 
own priorities, family, and starting your own business. Because maybe if, as you said, you know, your career went up, you know, at um, LVMH, maybe you would have just stayed there and never started your own business, right? Maybe. So, I, I, if you had asked me 13 years ago what I'd be doing today, I would say I have no idea. So if I always knew that a career was super important, I, I wanted to start a business to start a foundation, and I didn't know exactly what that meant. I said a global lifestyle brand. I didn't know what that meant either. Mm -hmm. So rewind if I hear some of the things I said, and it's a bit had shocking. That, but you had that message in the cosmos, you know? I don't know if you believe not, that. I'm not like necessarily. I, I was saying it. I'm not sure I knew exactly what I was saying mm -hmm. in retrospect. So it's a tremendous amount of work but Whoa. I'm passionate about it. Yeah, <laughs> I never right. regret saying no. Being a public um, figure, you are, you've done an amazing job still keeping you know, your private life private. Yeah. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, I mean, I think when I first started, it was something that I had to think a lot about because I'm an incredibly private person. So um, going through tough things, being a face of a company, it's, it, it doesn't come naturally to me to do it in public. And so how do you keep the privacy, protect your family? And I think, I think it's, you have to be, make strict, and strict rules from the beginning. I was very clear with journalists that my private life was off bounds. And I think you just need to do that. And you have to to protect your family. And it's a fine line. The public and people want authenticity, so they, you can't sort of give them one person and be someone else. You have to sort of give a bit of yourself, but it has to be a fine line. You're a great example for, for many, Thank many you. women out there. Thank so how, how is it being in the world of big business, surrounded by um, big, tough men, but being on the same level with them. I mean, it's funny. My parents raised my brothers and me thinking that we could do anything, um, that if we worked hard, if we put our mind to it, um, we could accomplish our dreams. And that's sort of how I was raised. I never, ever thought gender would come into play. To me, it was coming into understanding that women have more disadvantages than men. Um, when I first started out, there was an article in the New York Times written on me and the company and a good friend that I admire in business. She started Tribeca Film Festival and she called me and she said, the article was great, but you shied away from the word ambition. And mm -hmm. I think that was a pivotal thought for me thinking about it, her words, and then how I would move forward because it did strike me as why should women be scared of being ambitious when it's, and it's a negative connotation and it's not for men. So that's something I want to change. There's a way, in my opinion, to do it and you don't have to be aggressive and you can do things um, in an elegant way. And that's sort of how I try to live my life is take the higher road, but say things and have content behind your words. But I do think it's important when you're home to turn work off and that's something that I challenge myself with time. and really yeah. have that quality time. And being a great mom is a lot of work. And I think that if you can always be with your children and be on and present, that's that's half the battle. Um, how do you um, collaborate with um, a world of technologies? I mean, from the very beginning, I've been really intrigued with technology. And that's something, I remember starting the company 11 and a half years ago or 12 years ago, whatever it was, and people thought I was crazy launching with e-commerce because they thought no one would buy online. And that was really amazing to think about how short a time that was. Yeah. I'm obsessed with the idea of how technology is going to be affecting supply chain. And that's something I'm challenging our team to think about. How do we become a technology-driven company? And what does that mean? And what do you think about social, social media that have conquered our, our lives? It has really helped build our brand. We were early adapters of all of these platforms in a way that we could really engage a new customer, have a direct conversation, hear feedback, negative and positive, and really use social media to build our company. And that's what we've done without yeah. traditional advertising. Could you give us an example of women entrepreneurs of 20th century that somehow influenced you? Yeah, I mean, I think it can go from someone like an Estee Lauder, who is, um, I know her story, they're our partner, and 
Um, wow, she started in a very small way and built an extraordinary company and she had a family and I think she is um, a super dynamic businesswoman who also gave back. I think having social impact is something that is really important to me. So the Estee Lauder company does that as well. But then my mother, I mean, she didn't have a day-to-day -day job, but she was entrepreneurial in the way she lived her life. And I really respect that. I mean, all of a sudden she had a flower business doing because she was so incredible creative. We had an organic garden in the 70s. That was entrepreneurial. That was before people were talking about organic things and vegetables. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is really interesting for me because it's not just about business. I think it can be um, in the way you live your life and how um, you are a curious person or not. To me, curiosity is something that lasts with you your entire life. And that's something that I hope to always have and always learn. What was the best advice you've ever received? When I started the company, it was a lot of uh, raised eyebrows, a bit of negativity, like, is this a vanity project? And I remember my parents sitting me down and saying, you better thicken your skin, but you have got to think of negativity as noise. And I have really, mm -hmm. I've been raised that way and I don't engage in negativity. I try, it's out there in the ether, but I try to totally stay away from that. Do you? Yes. Envision your future in 10 years? In 10 years, I don't know if I think about 10 years from now, but I feel every decision we make is based on the long term and really how it affects that. And I want to have growth in our company, but I don't want it just to have growth. I want it to be meaningful and strategic. I feel like we could be four times the size if we wanted to now, but, yeah. but really I don't want to be that company. I want to be more special, more unique. We don't want to be everywhere, but we want to be at the forefront of, yeah. of things. And I would say technology is, is probably one of the most important 